Hello, this is Pastor French bidding you welcome to another segment of Daily Bread. I want to continue talking about religion and its trappings. In ancient times, it was believed the people who had the most lavish temple for their particular deity had the greatest god. Because of this, they spent a great deal of time, manpower, and money building the great temples of which the ruins of many are still seen today. Many years ago, my wife and I traveled to Europe and the Middle East. We toured many of these ruins, such as the ones in Rome and Greece. We went to one in the hills behind Beirut, Lebanon, called Baalbek. It sets on 40 acres and was built with stones weighing many tons each. The gods that were worshipped there, Jupiter, Venus, and Bacchus, were equivalents of the Canaanite deities Hadad and Artagatus. Constantine, though not yet a Christian, demolished the goddess temple and raised a basilica in its place. The temple of Jupiter, already greatly damaged by earthquakes, was demolished under Theodosius in 379 and replaced with another basilica, now lost, using stone scavenged from the uh, pagan complex. Even the Basilica of Peter in Rome stands on the foundation of a pagan temple. If you want to see pictures about Baalbek, go to your web browser and type, type it in. It's spelled B-A-A-L-B-E-K. That would give, us some, give you some idea of the immensity of the place. This was all done to give the impression of how great their gods were. When the first major religion was established, they set about to do exactly as the pagans had done even using some of the pagan temples as places of worship or churches. When David inquired of the Lord about doing this, uh, doing this, Jehovah's first response was, Did I ever ask anyone to build me a house? It never was Jehovah's intent to have a temple built for him, just as it was never his intent for Israel to have a king. Jehovah did not need some man-made representation of himself. However, he did allow them to have a king and allowed Solomon to build a temple. But both of these things came with stipulations that had consequences if broken. Read 1 Samuel chapter 8 for all that the Lord said concerning Israel having a king. It wasn't a blessing to Israel. This has always been the problem with man. He is always telling the Lord what we, that we know how to do it better than you do. Instead of just living the way the Lord would have us to we build man-made religions because we know better than the Lord how things ought to be. There's an old expression, give a man enough rope and he will hang himself. I think about, I, I think about that sometimes when reading 1 Samuel. The Lord said, go ahead, Samuel. Give them a king and let them see where it gets them. The thing about the Lord is that he does not make us serve him. He doesn't want slaves, but children. He said, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life, that both thou and thy seed may live. That's Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19. Why is it that men continually insist on making the wrong choice? Men mistakenly think, because Jehovah says, Go ahead and do something that is all right. But that is not always the case. The Lord has always given man a choice, but know that each choice has its own consequence and different roads traveled in and a different place. When will we understand that the Lord does not live in temples made of stone or wood or bricks, but within His people? He is not trying to impress the world with opulence or riches, but rather just trying to get us to understand how to be His children. What does it matter where we gather together if the Lord is not there? I'm reminded of the story of Elijah when he was in the cave hiding from Jezebel. When the word of the Lord came and spoke to him, it was not in the way he expected. Here's the account as recorded in 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 11 and 12. He said, Go out and stand on the mountain before Yahweh. Suddenly Yahweh was passing by with a great and strong wind ripping the mountains and crushing rocks before Yahweh. But Yahweh was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but Yahweh was not in the earthquake. 
and after the earthquake was a fire, but Yahweh was not in the fire. After the fire, there was a sound of a gentle whisper. Yahweh is not trying to impress us. He's trying to get us to listen and obey His instruction. We need to stop trying to see the Lord in all the opulence of religion and listen for His voice speaking to us softly and gently saying, This is the way. Walk in it and be blessed. Jesus told us, recording in Matthew 12, 6 and 8, But I tell you that something greater than the temple is here. He was speaking of Himself. And if you had known what it means, I want mercy and not sacrifice, you would not have condemned the guiltless. For the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. Thanks for watching. And remember until next time, give love, give life, give Jesus.